Harriet Baldwin. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow my Treasury Select Committee colleague, the member for Glasgow Central, um, in discussing this bill. And the member for uh, Wolverhampton South East talked about the historic events that had distracted him, perhaps from his preparation for his speech, although I don't think anyone would ever have known it, Madam Deputy Speaker, because he spoke uh, in a very, very well-informed way. And uh, I think that uh, we do often recognise historic turning points. Certainly, for Saturday at 5pm was one of them. I think today's announcement in terms of the Pfizer vaccine is another and that's why I'm a little bit disappointed, Madam Deputy Speaker, that there are so few colleagues here today for what I think is actually another really important turning point in the UK financial services sector. Not because of the gripping nature of some of the measures in this bill, which I think um, uh, you know, are sensible, practical measures, um, which no doubt will be uh, expatiated on uh, perhaps at greater length by other colleagues, um, but I'm going to confine myself, Madam Deputy Speaker, to really the reason I put in to speak in today's debate was because I wanted to hear uh, the Minister at the Dispatch Box talk about the vision for post-transition UK financial services. We are at an important inflection point and that's why I welcome the fact that not only has he outlined that vision today but also that the Chancellor was able to come earlier and talk about the future as he sees it for this incredibly important sector and he did emphasise in his statement as the Minister did at the dispatch box what a significant export sector this is. It is our biggest export sector. It is a sector that pays uh, some £75 billion a year in taxes. It helps to fund the public services uh, that we all rely on. It's why we need this sector to, um, uh, to do well in the future. And that's why I think it is important to note this historic turning point, because I think um, we may look back at this moment as we look back on uh, the moment in 1986 with the Big Bang as being a really significant inflection point. And I think the Chancellor today set out three ways in which we can really make this um, a moment for UK financial services where we build on our existing comparative advantage <laughs> to really become the leading financial services sector of the 21st century because he made some bold statements this afternoon that really reflect the future of what financial services are going to become. Uh, first of all, the statement that he made about uh, our global openness. <laughs> it is a matter of regret that we haven't been able to both mutually agree equivalents with the uh, EU. Obviously, we are entirely equivalent, and it would have been, I think, much more satisfactory if we began able to respect each other's starting point as being completely equivalent and go forward from there. And uh, it's clear from the way in which the European Union has not been prepared to uh, offer us equivalents uh, today that um, they are going to continue to use EU regulation in the area of financial services as a, a bit of a stick to uh, beat uh, up on this sector at which the UK uh, excels already. And I'm sorry to say that, Madam Deputy Speaker, it doesn't give me any pleasure, but it clearly would be unacceptable. And in the uh, Treasury Select Committee, we heard from the Governor of Bank of England that uh, it would be very, very dangerous to financial stability if we were to allow um, an external regulator to um, uh, suddenly take away equivalents from our financial services sector. And so I think the judgment that was made today to come to the dispatch box and say, do you know what, we're unilaterally going to do it for um, UK um, was, you know, regrettably, but but uh, historically the right uh, decision to take. And I think to accompany that with the three statements about the kind of financial services sector that we envision in the 21st sec uh, century, one that is globally open, 
uh, one that is inviting of inward investment, one that is inviting of uh, listings um, from around the world, mm -hmm. um, not just from uh, other EU countries. Secondly, Madam Deputy Speaker, one that's technologically innovative. And I think this is so important. We have led the world in terms of the fintech sector and the reg regulation, um, the, the fintech bridges that we've set up with other countries. I think Singapore was the first one that we established a regulatory bridge with another fintech in innovator. Uh, this is clearly going to be the way in which financial services evolve in the 21st uh, century. And it, even the announcement in terms of digital currencies and the leadership that we're showing on that, that's incredibly important as well. And then thirdly, the headline measure, the one that will no doubt get the, the big um, coverage around the world, um, is this equally important announcement that we're going to issue a green gilt. And uh, I am uh, the first to congratulate um, from, from these benches uh, my colleague, the member for Grantham and Stanford, who has been uh, very assiduous in calling for this. And I think you know, this, these three things, the global vision, the technological vision, and uh, the importance of, uh, uh, of the UK being the lead financial centre to finance uh, the climate revolution of the 21st century. We finance the industrial revolution here. We're going to finance the green industrial revolution here with countries from all around the world issuing bonds in the UK against that uh, green gilt benchmark. Um, so I think it's incredibly historic, actually, today, this bill. Um, I do also want to pay tribute to my honourable friend for the work that he's done uh, on uh, the breathing space work. I know how passionately, uh, when he and I were both elected as backbenchers in 2010, he's always championed this, and it's wonderful to see um, him bringing forward the legislation um, to uh, make progress in that area. So I want to pay personal tribute to my honourable friend on that. Um, I also uh, want to just ask the <coughs> Minister a few questions, if he could reply in his summing up. Um, he and the Chancellor have both highlighted um, the importance of uh, the UK as a global financial centre in their remarks today. Um, what progress can he give us in terms of what the UK is hoping to achieve in terms of US financial services free trade agreement? That always um, has struck me as being an important area where uh, we both are the biggest investors in each other's countries and where um, uh, the ability to do more in terms of financial services would help consumers in both countries. And I just wondered what his aspirations are and ambitions are in that area. Um, secondly, I wonder if he could tell me about uh, what his vision is for um, the Basel framework, um, particularly with regard to the very high risk weighting that it gives to um, investments in Africa. He will know that as Africa Minister, one of the things that used to um, uh, really get me um, excited was the potential for inward investment into Africa. We had a big Africa Investment Summit uh, this year in January, but the risk weighting of assets in many African countries is incredibly high using the Basel rules, and I just wondered if he had anything that he could update the House on in terms of uh, trying to make those um, assets appear less risky on, um, on, on bank balance sheets. And then the third question uh, I wanted to ask my honourable friend about was the assets that we still own as a result of the financial crash back in 2008. Can he update the House in terms of what the exit strategy is from those remaining financial services assets? So those were my three questions for the Minister. The, 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 the general direction and the strategy that they've announced today I think is a historic moment for UK financial services. We will look back on it in 10, 15 years as being equally significant as the announcements from, from Pfizer and, and from the, uh, the US election. And so can I congratulate the Honourable Gentleman on introducing this bill, and I look forward to hearing more in detail uh, when he responds. Christine Jardine. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker.